I'm Arky Dillon, I'm the president of the Riverside International Film Festival, and welcome to our Filmmakers Forum. If we can start with Jim, uh, just name a very, very brief introduction, and then we'll move on to the meat of the program. Um, my name is Jim Buchholz, I'm a professor at California Baptist University and independent filmmaker. I'm Nancy Douglas, the RIF programmer. Hello, my name is Claudia Kovacs. I'm a filmmaker and also a professional public speaker and crowdfunding consultant. George Adams, filmmaker. Oh, uh, Kasani Johnson, filmmaker. <laughs> uh, I'm Rahul Takrar, a uh, filmmaker as well as a student at Riverside City College in the film department. I'm Boon Boon Lohr, um, filmmaker. Hi, Frank Orofici, writer and filmmaker. Kung Pio Park, I'm a filmmaker and faculty at UC Riverside. Mark Robson, uh, Dean of the College of Architecture, Visual Arts and Design, which includes the film school at California Baptist, husband of film filmmaker and uh, board member here at RIF. Mm -hmm. Well, I really didn't expect this. I thought somebody had to be the audience. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Jeff Isbell. I'm a editor. I'm Denora Reyes. I'm a professor at Riverside City College and a filmmaker. Michael Eaton. I teach film at California Baptist University, and I'm a director and cinematographer. Oh, I was really expecting to talk. Well, you're a filmmaker. I'm Erin Dalen. I'm a filmmaker and just graduated from California Baptist University. Oh, I'm talking to you? Okay. Sure. Um, I'm Colleen Dallins. I'm a filmmaker. Colleen, oh. why don't you come here? Oh, okay. Okay. Nancy, if, I could, if I could just ask the question, as probably the least knowledgeable about crowdfunding in the group, um, I've only heard about it more or less this year, and about the only source I've heard about is Kickstart, and I know that you have to get all the money you ask for in order to be given anything, but it sounds like maybe there are a lot more sources than that that are out there, and you sound like somebody who knows them all. Yeah, so I actually, just to give you a context, uh, I raised $1.7 million for my own film, which, is a, which was a feature-length documentary. And that was, I crowdfunding my, crowdfunded my film before crowdfunding platforms existed. I actually, we created our own platform. And um, I created a community of 20,000 people for my film, um, and I had 2,000 supporters. And I used the structure that's called a hybrid fundraising, so you can, you can have fund, uh, donations as well as investments. And as far as your question, yeah, there are different platforms, so it just depends on, uh, there's actually a long list that I provide to my clients of, of what I suggest for the given project. Um, international ones, local ones, depending on the topic, and every site is a little bit different, so it's hard to give you one specific issue, you know, site recommendation, mm -hmm. but there are various sites that you can use. I think part of it also is, is depending on what type of film you're making. Is it a documentary? Is it a feature film? Is it a short? Is it a feature length? Um, all of those things play into, uh, again, the crowdfunding uh, community. Do you have a name person? Is it a, uh, whether it be an actor? Is it a name director? <clears throat> Excuse me. In 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 our case, I was one of the producers on on Claudia's film. Uh, we had Laszlo Kovacs, uh, one of the award-winning cinematographer, and Vilmos Zygmunt, uh, again Academy Award-winning cinematographer, attached to the project as well. And I think that 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 really helped open some doors as well for the for the project. So. Um I know we've talked, Jim and I, and you're looking at uh, crowdfunding uh, and producing your project, Jim. If you went, came to you guys, what would be your one, two, three, four list to do so that he could get on his way and do it? Well, the word is crowdfunding. So the crowd comes first and the funding comes second. And I think a lot of people forget that. And you really have to put a lot of effort into creating a really big community in relations to, 
you know the film that you're making so depending on what kind of a film you're making if you're making a short then probably you know you don't need that much money but if you're doing a feature length especially if it's a fiction film as opposed to a documentary um, then you really have to create a big community and I recommend the minimum time um, to spend on creating a community is one to three months but if it's a bigger project so we're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars if not the millions then I recommend to spend a year or even two on creating a community because once you create a community and there is a strategy behind that how to do that active uh, you know you have to be active about it pretty much every day and so once you created the community the the funding part will come much 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 easier if not easy well one thing um i mean besides the fact that on kickstarter if you don't reach a goal you don't get anything mm. but if you do reach a goal one uh, there's a couple things that people have reached their goals that have then come back to me and said, it was really hard to do this, and now it's not over because we have to fulfill all our commitments. Mm. And a friend of mine just got his filmed uh, Kickstarter. It was 150,000. He raised 153. Mm, right? nice. Had o over 800 supporters. But now, of course, you got to take care of 800 supporters. And it's very time consuming. I think they basically have to hire someone now. <laughs> <laughs> to take care of and do all that. Um, another person that came to me said about a, his successful Kickstarter was when they looked at who funded it later, it, and this was for a music video, and who funded it later, ended up, uh, they knew every person. It was friends and family. Mm -hmm. it, was like, it was like, man, we just could have gone to them mm -hmm. <laughs> and not set up mm -hmm. a Kickstarter campaign because it's like we didn't get anybody else mm -hmm. except the people that we already knew. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, does that go along your lines of that's what you have to do anyway? I mean, it's just, I mean, how many people are trying to do crowdfunding and they actually find people interested in your project that have no, you have no connection with to start with? Mm -hmm. how, how likely is that? Well, you, ha you have to have a, an idea that you want to attract funders and that you have to attract the interest. 50% um, of, of crowdfunding campaigns fail. So you have to really prepare. And yes, of course, family and friends, but as I think as a filmmaker, you're in for the long haul. So after the third film, probably your family and friends will go time out, <laughs> go somewhere else. <laughs> you know, so I think if it's the first film, probably your family and friends will be really, really active. But if you're planning to be a filmmaker for a long time, I would recommend that you really expand that. Because you just, unless you're coming, you're, your family is independently wealthy, okay, great. But if you're not a Getty family or, you know, any of those, then, then you really have to create ongoingly an interest. And you have to keep them engaged after you, you raise the funds. Because these people have an emotional investment, they have financial invest, investment, quote unquote. And so you continuously want to expand your fan base. I think that's really important to, to know. Can you tell us more about your hybrid model? Yes. So um, I heard about this actually through the IDA, which is the International Documentary Association. And the way it was, the IDA gave me a sponsorship, like a fiscal sponsorship. They take 5%. And at the same time, I had an LLC where the investors actually would give the money to the LLC. So I would be channeling money from, from two sources. One, the investors would write a check to the IDA. The IDA would write, take 5%, and then the IDA would write me a check. So after every $100, I would get 95. And then I put that money into the LLC's bank account. At the same time, I had investors write a check to the LLC and that my accountant was handling that. And so the, the reason have for, for someone who has relatively a lot of money and they're writing uh, investments for hundreds of thousands of dollars, um, investment is better because they can write it off the whole amount. If you're just um, 
if you gave an investment for hundred thousand dollars, uh, if you gave a donation as a hundred thousand dollar donation, then you have to deduct it in proportion of what the IRS allows. So if you have a lot of money, uh, investments are better because you can just write it off as a loss and fundamentally the, your gain is greater. So it really depends on the amount. You have to have that conversation. But now on the LLC, you must yeah. have set up percentages, like you give this amount of money, you own this much of the film? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. So well, the, the, the IDA, if I may, the IDA gave us some legitimacy. Um, I know because we, we dovetailed that into the next project. And by, by utilizing the IDA, again, that gave us, uh, again, the, the legitimacy. It wasn't just, they were, somebody wasn't just handing a check to Claudia. They were, they, they went through a, a, an organization that's been around years and years and years. There was an accounting process and that type of thing. So what, what Claudia did was that she allowed the, again, that hybrid of if you wanted to donate $250 you could and it could go through the IDA and then depending on where your tax status was you got a tax break if a person uh, uh, an investor wanted to own more of the film or wanted to be a part of the film a producer what have you then they could write the check directly to the LLC and then that was handled differently so what Claudia did was she 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 again this was something that that nobody else had been doing well, a um, few people, but very but it was few, very, it's it was not very a well-known model. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, some of the attorneys, excuse me for yeah, yeah, yeah. adding that, is some of the attorneys, entertainment attorneys in, in Los Angeles, I can recommend some names, who know this model very well. And there's a le lot of legal and, and accounting angle to this whole thing. So I basically was doing what my attorney told me to do, <laughs> <laughs> which is really important, I think, to know that if you're going, I mean, there are several different crowdfunding models, basically four different crowdfunding models. The most common is people just give money and that's it. But then, you know, there is, the, you know, you give products back, tickets back, various things. But fundamentally, I think it's really important to mention when we're talking about crowdfunding is having a strong legal team in place. And, and I know a lot of filmmakers are struggling financially. I get that. But at the same time, I think it's really important that, that your integrity also um, you know, extends to the legal angle and the, and the accounting angle. I don't know. Does it answer your question? How much percentage is spent on the legal part? Um, honestly, I don't remember. Uh, a good chunk, but I don't think I spend that much money. Maybe I'd say fifteen to twenty thousand at most um, for you know one point seven million. So, but not not that much. And I think it was worth it. I really think it was worth it because you know the contracts and it just it's just simply important. And you want to make sure you know you own the film the right. way you want it. You know, so I with this model, with this hybrid model, I own 51% of the film, and eventually bought up my investors. At the end, so now I own the film completely. So what happens if? So you, I assume you set up. I assume you set up a dollar amount on the LLC, like this is one percent of the film, and so forth, like that. And once you sell that other 49%, yeah, now you need more money. It's yeah. like, oh, we need more money to make the film. Yeah. How do you handle that? Well, from the donations. Yeah, we, yeah. yeah we, so we, that's totally donations IDA, now. Right. Yeah, you've yeah. already sold your 49% of the film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So people, I didn't sell it per se. I had members. So I think it wasn't, it wasn't, um, I, I think I know what you're talking about, that type of model, but I, I had uh, members of my LLC. And so my membership represented 51%. So we have a lot of students here. Yes. You guys obviously want to go ahead and, you know, mm -hmm. be great directors and producers and all. What questions do you have? How, how are you going to make your next feature? Do you guys, not to put you on the spot, but how much are you taught about this? How much do you pick up from the web and friends? Just maybe talk about that a little bit. Uh, for us to be truthful, we haven't really learned about this in school. Um, this is something that we're trying to figure out on our own outside of school, trying to, you know, look up books on Amazon, trying to find websites that talk about it, trying to find YouTube videos that talk about it. So for us, I mean, all the information that we're getting here is definitely a must need for us students. And in fact, uh, what's really grateful right now for our department at RCC is uh, our new head of the department that's come in and he's really trying to um, enforce this idea of 
being able, being knowledgeable of coming out of uh, RCC and knowing how to crowdfund, how to start up a, um, a small business, so to say, a film uh, as entrepreneurs, so to speak, and coming in how to get this money, how to get investors on board. And I think it would be really um, grateful if we could kind of figure out and get some of you people on board as well where, you know, where we can learn from you guys. Because uh, it's definitely one of the biggest weaknesses that we have as newcomers. And um, I think a lot of filmmakers that have come out of RCC are definitely amazing filmmakers, but they lack the business angle which I feel is... Show, yeah, the, the name of it is show business. Exactly. And, and, <laughs> and I, I, don't, I don't feel, at least it's been my experience, that the business aspect isn't taught as well. Mm -hmm. uh, professors, I'm sorry if that's part of the curriculum, definitely speak up. Um, but I know in, in, in where I'm living now in Oklahoma, a lot of it, a lot of the students are given the camera and they're given the equipment and they're told to go out and make a film. Mm -hmm. But the business aspect of is it is where we lie. Is, and what I tell people mm -hmm. is, along with that film degree, get a business degree, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, because you've got to be able to count those beans, mm -hmm. you you're know? Coming from that, we're going to put Dean Mark Robertson on the spot. He's the Dean, as he said, School of Architecture and Visual Arts. Um, so what we're talking about, Mark, what's the in the curriculum about teaching the business side of show business and how much do they learn and how much do you guide them into that direction after the creative process is done? The short answer is not nearly enough about business. In any of our, uh, in our college we have architecture, graphic design, photography, uh, art, and film. And uh, I very much encourage that None of those disciplines traditionally teach a lot of business along with the art, and all of them are completely dependent on being able to understand business. I learned that the hard way as an architect after I got out of school and went into the world and thought, wow, I wish I knew what I was doing now. And, uh, but actually, we have a class coming up um, in, marketing. in the fall on uh, film marketing taught by a person who has many, many, many years of experience at that, and I'm really excited about our students having that opportunity to well, do. We had Ralph Winter co-teach a class with me. And we did have uh, one of the biggest producers in Hollywood come out and teach a class, and he talked a lot about that as well. We were very excited about that. You probably took that class, didn't you? No? Okay. No. <laughs> but you wish you had. I, I wish did you want to talk about the marketing class at all? No. No, okay. <laughs> so the, no, I just wanted to follow up with, with that is George, what he said. And I've been a producer and distributor and I learned the hard way and got myself kicked all over the map and learned really the hard way. Um, sometimes I feel I should have done a management degree also, but if you raise enough money, you can hire a good manager. So you don't have to waste two and a half years uh, <laughs> getting the degree. You can waste six months raising that money to hire the manager, but I agree with you a strong legal team and a strong manager, management person is, is vital for, I think, a successful venture. But uh, thanks for that. Oh, well, I was just going to say that I, I feel like I'm kind of like in between, literally and figuratively. Um, not a, quite a student, but I'm not quite as seasoned as, as these wonderful filmmakers and producers over here. Um, I have a decent amount of experience crowdsourcing and, and and whatnot and going through that process. I have a decent amount of experience getting hit with the business side. I feel like I have one foot in the indie world and one foot in that Hollywood world where I'm even like pitching projects and things of that nature. And I think uh, the strangest part about uh, crowdsourcing for me are, are two things. And one you covered, which was the crowd comes first. Yes. I had to learn that the hard way. And I think there is something to uh, us just doing it, especially the young guys. I'm like you have time to be stupid, so mm -hmm. go be stupid exactly. for a little yeah. while. <laughs> like we're not like it's. Think about it like football. Mm -hmm. I can learn all the plays in the world. I can learn the technique on paper, but I can't apply it until I learn how to take a hit. Mm -hmm. In this business, you're just going to. There's no avoiding it. Mm -hmm. You're gonna fail. You're gonna mess up. But there's also, like, like you said, though, you, you're also surrounded with people who have that knowledge. Mm -hmm. Claudia is one of those people. I mean, she, this is what she does for a living. Um, you know, so in your budget, if you've got a budget for a consultant, mm -hmm. 
the Claudia is definitely a, a good resource to have. Claudia and I have been making films together for 15 years. You're right? absolutely right if you're going for a certain budget. Right. If you're going for like five grand, six grand just to make your thesis film or something like that, you need to get out and do it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there are there is a certain budget level that makes it so that you still have to just go do it. I, I, I will even argue for that at, for the like early 20s and whatnot. As a matter of fact, that is business school to a certain extent. And it does, nothing keeps you more accountable than having 300, 400 people constantly asking you when you're going to be done. <laughs> and then the other thing is uh, the most awkward and weird thing about crowdsourcing, as I look at people who are just a little bit younger than me, is um, I think as filmmakers we're making really fundamental mistakes in the marketing mm -hmm. of our crowdsourcing, which is uh, the way we make our crowdsourcing videos. Mm -hmm. The number one rule about filmmaking is show, don't tell. But when you make your videos, including myself, what's the first thing you do? Mm -hmm. You go, Hey, my name is Sonny Johnson, and I'm making Dangerous Dinosaurs 2, and <laughs> the, cinematography is, the cinematography is going to be amazing. Picture right. this, instead of actually showing them. Right. Um, and I think that we have to ground ourselves as filmmakers in improving our ability all along the way. Yeah, you may not have a lot of money, but you do have an iPhone, you do have this. Mm -hmm. Go make something, show people you are worth it. Mm -hmm. Don't just Definitely. talk about it. But I don't know, I might have been a little off topic. I'd like to add that when I started making movies and started working in Hollywood, and I, you know, I came from Europe, I didn't speak English, and I was you know, uh, trying to figure out America, really. But what, one thing I was very clear on is whatever I'm going to do in show business, I want people to see my work. I'm not going to make movies that no one sees. And so I studied marketing, self-promotion, PR, press, all these kind of things because you can spend $5,000 on a thesis film, but no one sees it, and it doesn't really move your career forward. Absolutely. What's the point? So I'm working right now with a lot of students. I just was speaking at Northridge. I speak regularly at universities. I get invited as a speaker. And, um, and I work with students right now who, who want to use their thesis film as a vehicle. And I'm strategizing for them and creating a platform for them where it's going to be truly, that film is going to make the next one happen. Mm -hmm. And that's how you want to build your career, is one film should make the next one happen. If that doesn't happen, then your business strategy is not working. And nowadays, your crowdsourcing campaign can become the biggest vehicle for getting your name out there. Yes, mm -hmm. People Absolutely. love covering those underdog stories. Mm -hmm. Like when I did my crowdsourcing campaign, the Hollywood rep Reporter covered me. I have that framed. Exactly. Because yeah. <laughs> I didn't think that was going to happen for like right. 10 or mm -hmm. 15 more years. And they've been covering my stuff ever since. And believe it or not, I got, I got representation from that. I got my legal team from that. There you go. So, you know, crowdsourcing could, it could, once again, crowd comes first. Mm -hmm. But think about it this way. If you don't have a YouTube channel that you stumbled into where you got hundreds of thousands of views, the and this is, you know, seed and spark. The seed <laughs> of your crowding, your crowd, your crowd could be the crowdsourcing campaign, as long as you go into it kind of with realistic expectations. Mm -hmm. That's why I think you guys have it the dopest. You're so young mm -hmm. that <laughs> yeah, you can afford to make mistakes. Yeah, you're so young that Absolutely. you can ask for three thousand dollars. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And even if you don't get it, what do you expect? You're like twenty years old. Mm -hmm. However. Those people that were into the idea, they stick around, like she said, for the next one and the yeah. next one. So. And what's really beautiful is that once people uh, put money into your project, you can ask, actually ask for other things. Mm -hmm. Like the way I got a review for, for Variety is I had this big crowd and I couldn't get Variety to review, review my film for the sake of my life. And I just, you know, I just decided I'm just going to put it out there in the universe and see what happens. And I wrote an email to my crowd and said, does anyone has any connections in a variety. <laughs> and someone did, and that's how I ended up getting a really good review. So, so asking for additional things, um, in-kind type of help, is I think it's very important. And your crowd can really take you to the next level. So it's not just the money. Can any of you think of a way that a film festival can help Yes. Encourage, <laughs> yes. Encourage, um, <laughs> encourage people to get to filmmakers that need funding. You know, I, I, it, we've got something of a mailing list that we've received, but we don't really know if there are 
other filmmakers in the Riverside or Inland Empire mm -hmm. that are going through a crowdfunding process. So how would we be able to find out stuff like that? Well, you have to become a magnet for your community. That's, I think that's really important. It's all about attraction. I mean, always going out and asking for things is one thing. But there's another way of doing this, is, is being so fabulous. And, and I know I, this sounds a little bit like, you know, new agey and everything, but, you know, doing things for the community and, and having, you know, putting programs out there and, and marketing yourself and, and doing your own PR for the organization that people want to come to you, want to interact with you, and then you will find out the information. So really creating a community. I think the crowd part, again, comes up. So even if you're not crowdfunding, but you just have a career in show business, you need a crowd, you need a fan base. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's really what stardom is. Your crowd is really big, that's all it is. Your fan base is really big, so, so absolutely. Mm -hmm. we have, um, you did a documentary from, the, from UCR. Right. Tell us about your experience with uh, funding of it. Uh, yeah, actually, I have a question to you, Claudia. You too. Um, I raised a fund uh, last year in Kickstarter, about yeah, Kickstarter, about four thousand dollars for just doing you know, a post production you know, to, to budget. And, and I, this is a tax reporting season, right? So I have a question: How to report the, the, the tax, the fund? What you know? What is it? Is it income or is it a non-taxable gift or you know any other you know category or? Yeah. To, to be honest, I have no idea because it's my accounting. Is it okay? It's an accounting question. I, I don't know whether it's an income or how you would need to do that. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I asked my filmmaker friend, but no one knows exactly how to report it. And someone says. Should be technically income or something. Like yeah. No. No. I, no. I'm, I'm not an accountant. Okay. Let me or say that. I'm gonna say that on film. I'm not an accountant. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, the, but one more time. I, I am not an accountant or a lawyer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, I'm a filmmaker. Legal right. Just a legal disclaimer. Okay. If 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 you have what I do is I create an LLC for each individual film. Okay, so every film is its own entity. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Emerald, Texas, the film that was shown here, is its own entity. Touche Productions is its own entity. So if you were to do a crowdfunding for your film XYZ film, okay, my suggestion is just you create an LLC, which is a limited liability company, for that project. Then any money you raise goes into that bank account for that LLC. Okay, that's not income not unless you draw from it and pay yourself. Then it becomes income, okay? If you leave it in the LLC and you use it for, you know, hiring, you know, uh, people to come out and shoot your film, now you're using that crowdfunding to pay people. It's not income, okay? You can also then include that money as, as capital gains, as losses. That's when your accountant can come in and ha step in and help you do that. I also suggest, yeah, you get a good accountant, somebody that knows filmmaking, uh, there are plenty in the book. Claudia can also recommend some, I'm sure. But no, if you leave it in that bank account and use it to pay your crew and pay for post-production, it's not income. Okay. George, can I come? Yeah. So, so you said your budget was four thousand dollars, right? So, I mean, I think maybe I'm disagreeing with you on that on the lower lower budget, you know, films because if you have an LLC in California, you have to pay eight hundred dollars annually. Move to Oklahoma; it's forty-five bucks. Okay, well, maybe in Oklahoma. <laughs> But in California, yeah. it's eight hundred dollars yeah. annually, and then you know everything. If you have an LLC, if you have a business entity, everything costs more. So I think there is a mini I would say there should be a minimum budget for you to think about in terms Fair of enough. an LLC. Um, I don't exactly know this question, uh, the answer to your question. One thing I would say though, this: anything you do, any any film project you do, always handle the money completely separately from your personal you know, money, from your family's money, from your business's money. Always have a separate bank account. You know, make sure that your integrity and your transparency is you know, top-notch because that's how you create trust in the long run. 
and that's how your investors or, or you know donors will come back to you and say oh, okay he was really great the first time I'm gonna give money the second time and so forth somebody who hasn't um, I have a question please this is like the last question we've got three minutes to go okay so okay uh, not as long as you guys have less time to make stupid mistakes and everything like that but um, regarding the LLC and the crowdfunding okay we're all filmmakers here we all have projects how do we differentiate towards the crowd to say okay invest in my project not his not hers not that person over there what's the one thing to do a, a put up a trailer a summary without the attachment like you said very important what you said attachments whether known actor known DP what's the one thing that would separate his project from his project that people will be drawn into mm -hmm. two words target market you need to know your market for the given project so for documentaries it's really great i think because you can you know it's cause oriented it's not just a fiction film about whatever but you know like if you do make a fiction film about zombies then that's your target market. You know, that's the kind of odd, unusual, alternative type of way of thinking. So two words, ultimately, because we have three minutes, I can go on about this for three hours, really, but target market. And I, and I do would like to say, by the way, that as a consultant, if any of you are interested, I give free consultations. So if that's interest to anyone, yeah. I'll be happy. Fixes your budget. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll give you my card. Yeah, absolutely. I give a free 20 minute free consultation to anyone, and I'm really, it's just no, no pressure to buy or anything. I really do want to help, so. Thank you. You're welcome. I say one thing real quick. You can learn whatever you want in the class. There's no, nothing for experience, okay? You know, I got hooked up with Maria for the documentary. Hook up with an um, experienced filmmaker. True. You know, that'll help you out a lot. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Well, thank you all so much. That's one hour passed very quickly, and like you said, we could probably do many, many hours over here. But really appreciate everyone's input and uh, thank you again.